One of the other built-in effects that Final Cut Pro does is image stabilization, what used to be called smooth cam in Final Cut Pro 7. And in Final Cut Pro 7, this was a filter that you had to choose to apply. And in Final Cut Pro X, it is actually built in. Every clip optionally has a stabilization section in the same area where you have the transform and the crop, all these other settings. Now, in order to do a stabilization, you do need to analyze the clip. And this can be done on ingest. We talked a lot about this when we're talking about importing the clips. Or at any time, you can right-click on a clip and say analyze and fix. And it's going to analyze the clip for things like stabilization and rolling shutter and so forth and color balance, other things. But so once you've done the analysis, the data is there, you can just apply the, let's uh, go back to this clip here, stabilization. I'm going to play this clip. This is before it's been stabilized. And you can see there's a lot of shaking, a lot of camera shaking there. All right. And now I'm going to turn on the stabilization. And I want you to notice the first thing that happens is the image becomes very zoomed in. And that's because the way stabilization works, in order to stabilize the image, it needs to enlarge it slightly so it can maintain the movement above and below the frame line. So I'm going to back this off just a little bit so we're not doing quite as much and so you can see it a little bit more clearly here. But if I play this clip now, you can see that it's been stabilized quite a bit. Now you do still see some blurry frames, right? I'm going to play it one more time there. Watch this again. See those little blurry frames like that? That's because... While stabilization does technically stabilize the image, you know, if you looked at the contrast, this little black line behind this, whatever this kitchen device is, that would stay the same in frame to frame. If I just step through this frame to frame, it is stabilized. But in order to, but you, you can't remove the fact that while the camera was moving at the time of the shooting, it was blurring. There's, there's actual motion blur from the, that one frame that was recorded is still a blurry frame, and there's no way to fix that. So the two downsides to using image stabilization are, one is that by definition, it means you're going to have to zoom in on the shot, and it'll do that automatically. The, the, more you tr the, more, the higher the setting you use over here in the stabilization, the more zooming in is required. And you're never going to be able to fix those blurry frames because by definition, they were blurry when they were captured. They're, you're just smoothing a blurry frame, but the frame itself is still blurry. So now you can determine which of these three things you need. The translation is addressing left and right movement and up and down movement. Rotation is adjusting literally rotation if the camera was rotating slightly while it was being shot. And scale has got to do with if the camera is moving forward and backward, closer and back to the subject. If we remove all the scale adjustment and all the rotation adjustment, we get a little bit of a benefit here because in this case, I think most of the adjustment here is, well, I guess there's a little bit of rotation that still needs to be done, but it is still being stabilized somewhat. Again, here's the original. You see all that, jer that jerkiness in there. And then let's do that one more time. We'll turn that on. I'm going to bring the rotation just a little bit as well. Let's bring those up to about one and a half and play that one more time now. And you see the image has been stabilized significantly. So you can control those settings. Basically, you can customize it. The less you use, the less stabilized it's going to be, but the less zooming in you're going to get as well. So it's a trade-off. You want to find the right balance. And depending on what specific uh, issues you have in your footage, whether it's, it's left, right, up, down, rotation, or scale, meaning closer and further from the subject, uh, you can adjust which of these things you need to turn on and how much of it. Quickly, there's also a setting called rolling shutter, and I don't have footage to demonstrate this, but this is a problem that happens with CMOS cameras, like typically like DSLRs and uh, other, other cameras that use that sort of chip. When you pan quickly, you see a certain amount of distortion, like vertical lines will certainly appear all wavy and they'll be all slanted when you're panning, and it's a distracting effect. When you turn on this rolling shutter, again, it does require the analysis, but Final Cut will automatically remove that or, or counteract that effect and you can choose between none, low, high, etc. You can choose how much correction you want to do. And just like the stabilization, there is some degree of trade-off. You're, you're not going to, it's not going to magically make things look perfect, but it can improve subtle cases by increasing this setting a little bit to improve the rolling shutter errors, basically to correct for the rolling shutter errors that are created when you shoot with those sort of cameras.